Hello there, I'm Nikki of the Clouds. Today I would like to touch on an extremely important topic, preventing injury to your body as an artist. As I have mentioned in my previous video, I have tendonitis in my drawing forearm, which can also be considered repetitive strain injury because of how it manifested. To start, I'll go over a bit of a backstory on my experience with wrist injury. If you would like to skip to the tips and tools, here's a timestamp for that. You can also find all the timestamps in the description of the video. One time, back in April 2021, when I got into VTubing, I spent three consecutive days working on my VTuber model. Typically, this isn't something odd or something to be cautious about. Some people draw every day as their 9-to-5 job, but I have ADHD, which means I tend to hyperfixate on things that give me that sweet dopamine, and I forget to take care of myself. I forget to eat, use the bathroom, and most importantly, I forget to take breaks. So I overused my hand, and I ended up with pain in my forearm and had to entirely avoid drawing for two weeks to let it recover. My hand got better, but the pain never really went away. It still resurfaces every few weeks whenever I forget my place and overuse it again. Evidently, I didn't really learn my lesson, as here I am, three years later, once again forced to take a break due to the return of the pain. So I decided to make this video to help you avoid the same pain that I and many other artists go through. Let's get into the tools and tips and tricks on how to avoid repetitive strain injury. Let's first look at how your body looks when you're drawing. Your posture and how you hold your pen play a big role in your comfort. Everyone has different ways to hold a pen, but some of them may be more healthy for your wrist than others. Please keep in mind that I am not a medical professional, these are mostly my personal observations on what is more likely to help. The tripod grip. This is probably the most common way to hold a pen. It's typically the most comfortable as well, as long as you are light-handed. It keeps your hand sideways, preventing the crossing over of the bones and squeezing of the muscles, tendons and nerves between. If you tend to press too hard on the surface, it will very likely crush and cause pain to your ring and pinky finger joints. This more so applies to digital artists, as the pen thickness is not often indicative of pen pressure, and you can press too hard. I am criminally guilty of this, and my ring and pinky joints hurt now. The Dainty Grip, a very delicate and light-handed grip that is very reminiscent of how you'd imagine artists holding their brushes when painting on a canvas. It almost forces you to keep your grip on the pen light. It can be a bit hard to get used to, and it seems heavy on wrist movement for detail work. The T-Rex Grip the reason I call this the T-Rex grip is because you can imagine this is how a T-Rex with its three fingers would hold a pen. It has less pressure on the ring and pinky finger, so it's easier if you are heavy-handed. Like I mentioned before, when your palm is facing down, the bones in your forearm cross. Unfortunately, this grip's direction isn't good for that. There's still a way to hold it properly to avoid too much of the crossing, but you'd have to be extra conscious about it. Full hand grip, or when you use your whole palm to hold the pen. With this way to hold a pen, no fingers are being pressed on, preventing knuckle pain. And it's a very sideways grip, preventing the bones crossing. But if you're heavy-handed, you might grip onto the pen too hard, once again straining your knuckles, wrist, and muscles. A pen grip could be a way to combat that, but I will talk about those later. Plus, if you're heavy-handed, this will deteriorate your pen nibs even more. And this grip has less control over the pen's movement because it's harder to move your wrist, which is actually a good thing. With the age of writing and digital art, as we have moved from drawing on large canvases to drawing on smaller tablets, we have started using a wrist for drawing precise details. Back when artists drew on canvases, propped up on easels, they were pretty much forced to use their whole arm, from the shoulder to the elbow. The wrist was never so strained. Plus, nowadays, our wrists also receive strain from typing on keyboards and using computer mice. Artists should do their best to lessen the use of the wrist for drawing and rely more on the elbow and shoulder motion. A hard wrist brace can help with keeping the wrist straight, which we'll get into later. Another thing to keep in mind is proper posture. I know, I know, we all like to sit curled up like little shrimp, it's a big meme in the community, we all know that we shouldn't, but man it's so comfortable. Except that we have to remember that everything within our bodies is interconnected. The nerves in your wrist extend all the way from your spine, which means an improper posture is likely to impact your whole arm and wrist. A certain way you keep your shoulder can and will affect how the muscles and tendons in your arm interact. So please, for long-term health's sake, just be mindful of your posture. You don't have to beat yourself up if you mess up, 
But if you notice and realize that you're shrimping, just do your best to fix it. Your body will thank you. Speaking of posture, I have an opinion that may be a bit of a hot take, but don't get the screen tablet. I completely understand the want for one. A Cintiq has been my dream ever since I really got into digital art. And just last year, I went and bought an XP Pen artist tablet. But depending on how you prop it up, it is so much worse for your posture than a non-screen tablet. When you use a regular pen tablet, you keep your neck straight looking at your monitor. But with a screen tablet, if it is small or not propped up, your neck will always be bending downwards to look at the screen. Here's a tweet that I will also link below that goes over some pros and cons of both types of tablets. But essentially, it's best to only invest in a screen tablet if you can get one with a large screen or have the proper equipment to set it up in a way that would allow you to have upright posture. Now let's talk about some tools and setup. It's important to use a pen that is of a comfortable thickness. If the pen is too thin, your fingers will bend more and strain the tendons in your knuckles. I recommend looking into getting a thicker grip to put on your pen. This is a trick I picked up from Damien, a friend of mine who also has tendonitis. He uses tape to thicken the pen and makes sure to cut out holes for the buttons. He also has more pain in the thumb, so he makes the part where his thumb rests thicker. I recently bought a grip that is made for an Apple pencil, which are thinner than drawing tablet pens, and I had to cut it on one side to make it fit. Don't worry, cutting it won't ruin it, it will still hold on tightly to the pen and will not slip. Some artists and people who knit make a hole in a tennis ball for their pen or knitting needle, which is much thicker and very comfortable to hold. Before making this video, I went on Twitter to ask other artists for advice that I could use in case I overlooked something. And uh, it seems that an overwhelming majority of them really recommends wrist braces. Specifically, the kind of wrist brace that prevents your wrist and thumb from moving. This ties back to what I said earlier about how nowadays our wrists are so much more stressed than they ever were. And the anatomy of a wrist is extremely complicated. The human hand has 27 bones, 8 of which are in the wrist. That's a third of all the bones in the hand! Which makes them very small, with a tunnel between them that allows the nerves to pass through. That's why one of the injuries is called carpal tunnel syndrome, which is where your wrist bones, or carpals, end up constricting the nerves in the tunnels between them, resulting in sharp wrist pain and numbness in the hand. To prevent strain and usage of your wrist when drawing, it is highly recommended to have a brace that restricts wrist movement. If you're like me and end up squishing your fingers when drawing, then these finger bands might help with putting space between the fingers and help them not get squished. Another recommendation is to increase the pen pressure sensitivity on both your tablet settings and in your drawing software, so that you are not as compelled to press hard on the screen. It will take some getting used to, but it's great in the long run. Now, for my personal Achilles heel, taking breaks and not drawing for hours on end. We are trying to prevent repetitive strain injury after all, so we need to avoid repetition and strain. Drawing is a physically strenuous action, at least for your wrist and arm. So, much like other physical exercises, you will prevent injuries if you stretch and do some exercises before you start working. A friend shared this very cute Splatoon-themed page of exercises, the full version of which I will also link in the description so you can save it for yourself. To prevent overworking your muscles, it's very important to take regular breaks every once in a while. If phone alarms don't work for you or you tend to ignore them, here are a few on-screen timer applications for Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. I know that it can be hard to take breaks with ADHD, especially when you're hyperfixated or in the zone, but you have to put in the willpower to do it for your own sake. If I could do it, so can you! And one of the greatest ways to protect your weak spots like your wrists and tendons in your hands is to level up your built-in shield, your muscles. Just some light but regular arm exercises with some dumbbells or any other weight or a grip training gadget will go a long way. Just remember that proper form and taking it slow is more important and effective than a heavier weight of finishing your reps quickly. Also, strengthening the muscles in your back will help you keep a straight posture. Other ways you can help your hand avoid strain and pain is to protect it when using repetitively in unnatural positions. For example, foam wrist supports for when you're using the keyboard and mouse. An ergonomic mouse is a great investment as well, especially if you work with it a lot or play video games. It's recommended to put your pen down when you're not drawing. 
don't hold on to it when you're idly looking for references, getting distracted, or taking a break. Lastly, two of my friends, Damien and Flesh, have carpal tunnel syndrome that affects their thumb. There are various ways to protect your thumb, such as not scrolling on your phone using it. I know you'll think you look like your grandma scrolling with your index finger, but it's better than to be unable to use your thumb at all. I know some tips on this list involve monetary investment, but those are not as necessary. Most measures I talked about in this video, especially taking breaks and doing exercises, will go a long way. I will link more resources below that you can check out for yourself. Thank you so much for watching! I hope this video has been helpful to you in showcasing various resources on preventing repetitive strain injuries as an artist. Leave a like and share this video with your loved ones to help them protect themselves too. And I would really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel for more art content. Take care of yourself! Bye-bye!